Want to build your own paper stadium? The plans for this very stadium you're looking at are in the Etsy link in the description. Buy it, print it off, come back to this video. The rest of this video is an instructional video on how to put together your paper stadium. One of the most common questions I get on paper stadiums is how do I do it? What are my construction techniques? Well, the idea I have is I'm selling this PDF on Etsy, you'll print it off and then you'll watch this video and go step by step with me and build your own paper stadium. What I'm thinking is we'll start with this basic horseshoe stadium that kind of looks like Kansas uh, Memorial Stadium. And you'll learn how to build a basic stadium and then hopefully that'll teach you some of the techniques so that eventually maybe someday you can build your favorite team's stadium. Now let's get started with some of the most important things. When you print off the PDF, it's best if you can print it on cardstock. You can get cardstock paper at Walmart or Target, whatever. If that's not an option, you can print it on printer paper. That's perfectly fine. It just won't be as sturdy as a cardstock um, paper stadium would be. Um, the other thing is the supplies you're going to need. Now, I do use a bunch of different random tools when I make my paper stadiums, but I'm not going to tell you to go out there and get all that stuff. I'm just telling you what you need to do this is you're going to need some Elmer's glue. A lot of people ask me, why not rubber cement? Let me tell you, there is a time and a place for rubber cement. This is not it, okay? This is not it. You're also going to need a pair of scissors. And then something that's really important that you might not have laying around the house are binder clips. This is uh, probably the tool I use the most other than glue and scissors. So once you got those three supplies, everything else, these other tools that I use, you can get by without them, even if they do make it easier, like tweezers and stuff like that. But you definitely are gonna need Elmer's glue, scissors, and binder clips. First step, we're gonna take our field, our base, our map, whatever, I never really know what to call it. And I would definitely suggest gluing it down to a piece of cardboard. I just got the back of a Pringles box because we go through a lot of Pringles in this household. And I'm gonna glue it down to the Pringles box. Now, pro tip number one, when you glue stuff, it doesn't take a lot of glue and you don't wanna do a lot of glue because glue will create waves in the paper. When I glue it, I'm just doing a bunch of dots of glue throughout the paper. And then I'm gonna press it down. I'm gonna let that dry, probably put a book on top of it just for like three or four minutes and let it dry. So the way this will work is all the parts have numbers on them. If a part is exactly the same, like all these are all the same, so they're all number ones, so on and so forth. So what we're talking about right now is we're gonna cut out all the number ones, which are the side profiles of the stadium. When you cut it out, pro tip, it is easiest to cut them out in big chunks first kind of like this and then do all the fine cutting the close cutting and so on and so forth so let's hit a time lapse all right now I got all my number ones cut out and the next step is for people that had to print on printer paper if you have cardstock you don't got to worry about this for printer paper we're gonna need to make it a little bit stronger so here's a super secret if you fold a piece of paper it makes it stronger so what we are gonna do and the reason we have this red line here is we're gonna be folding this later to make the printer paper stronger. And the next super secret is if you score a piece of paper with a ballpoint pen, it makes it a lot easier to fold and fold in a straight line. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a straight edge and a ballpoint pen, and you're gonna go through and you're gonna draw a, a line on all of these red lines so that later it's easier to cut. So if you have cardstock, you totally skip that step. If you have printer paper, Hopefully by now, you've drawn a line over all the red lines that makes it easier to cut out. Now, let's talk about cutting it out, because again, this is gonna be different whether you have cardstock or printer paper. Let's talk about the cardstock people first. When you cut this out, you don't need this rectangle on here. Okay, that's for the printer paper people. We're gonna be cutting off on the red edge and the blue edges. For the printer paper people, you're gonna cut all the way on the side here. So on this edge, across, and down. Now let's talk about when we cut. You wanna make sure that you're making a nice straight cut as much as you can, 
and also the cuts are consistent. That means there's, I don't know, like 30 or 40, 20, 30 of these, okay? We want them to all be cut pretty much the same. So when we cut it, we're gonna cut right on the edge of the blue line. And of course, cardstock people, you're gonna cut right on the edge of the red line. And you know how hard it is to get your kids to be quiet? And they are silent, absolutely silent, until you want them to be quiet. So here I got my cardstock paper, and I'm gonna cut right on the edge of this red line. It doesn't need to be perfect, but right on the edge, right where the red meets the white. So once it's cut, I should still see a little bit of the red. With the printer paper, again, I'm keeping this rectangle, so I'm gonna cut right on the edge of the blue line. Again, right where the blue meets the white, so that when I cut it out, I can still see the blue edge. Now for both of them, I'm gonna cut the rest of these wedges out, like this. So if you have printer paper, all your wedges should look like this, all your number ones should look like this. If you have cardstock, if you have cardstock, all your number ones should look like this. So, let's go through and cut out all of the profiles for the state. All right, I got all my number ones cut out. And the next step, again, is only for people with printer paper. So if you have uh, cardstock, you don't gotta do this. But people with printer paper, you're taking that fold, that uh, mark that we already scored, and you're just gonna give it a nice little fold. And it should fold pretty easily, because like I said, I gave you my super secret that you scored it with a ballpoint pen, and now it folded into a nice straight line. And it should make your paper a lot stronger. Now it's time for the real fun. This is where it really gets crazy. This is what kids dream about someday growing up to be a paper stadium builder and standing at the profile. So we got number one and we got our binder clips. Now I like to do this before I put it on the stadium is hold it flat and then use the binder clip to make sure it's standing up at a 90 degree angle. Let's talk about putting these on our map. It's time. You see all the stripes the lines that are on the mat, those are obviously where the profiles are gonna be. We are gonna skip the first one on the edge and come back to that later. We're gonna put our first profile right here. When you do this, this is one of the times you're actually gonna use a lot of glue. So I'm gonna take my Elmer's glue and I'm just gonna put three globs of glue on that black line, like this. So you see that? Three globs of glue. Then I'm gonna take my profile stood up from the paper clip, and I'm gonna line it up perfectly, or as perfectly as I can, on that black line. And then another thing that's very important, the point right here needs to go right up to the black line. Okay, I'm getting it as close as I can without touching the green. So again, the point of the profile gets as close as it can without touching the green. When I go through and stand up all these profiles, since the binder clip kind of gets in the way, I can't do one after another, so I can't do the one right next to it. So I'm gonna do every three spaces. I'm gonna put one up. The other thing that's really important before you get going on this is you see the middle here where there's a gray spot? Do not do these ones yet, okay? And then when you come back down here on this end, do not do that one either. So again, just to sum this up before I go through the time lapse, I'm gonna do every three spots. So there's gonna be two spaces for now. I'm gonna put one right here. I'm gonna go around the stadium. I am going to skip the ones in the middle here. Do not do those ones. Skip the ones on the very ends of the stadium right here and right here. If you have one of the ones with the folded over parts, you're just doing the same exact thing. You're putting the binder clip on here with the folded over part in the binder clip. See that? And then I'm gonna make sure there's no glue catching on here. So when I glue it, I'm gonna have it, I'm gonna have it so the glue touches here, here and here, but I'm not gonna touch the folded part because I want that to come back out once I remove the binder clip. So I'm gonna wait for this glue to dry. If you are in a hurry, you do need to give it about 15 to 20 minutes and it should be able to stand by itself. But if you got time, go watch an episode of Tiger King or something. When you come back, by the time this glue is no longer white, 
you know it's completely dry. So we're gonna let this glue dry and then we'll work on the next stage. All right, let's talk about what we're gonna do on the next step. After I remove all the binder clips, now I'm gonna be filling in the next one here. Again, leave this alone, leave this alone, and leave the two on the end here alone, okay? I'm basically just gonna fill in one in between each of these gaps and go around, that'll basically be phase two. Okay, all the profiles I put up for phase two are dried, so I'll be removing those binder clips and doing the final phase, phase three. By the time I'm done with phase three, all my number ones should be used. Once again, I'm leaving the ends alone, leave that alone, leave that alone, and leave these two alone, and I'm filling in all the black lines in between the ones that I have standing right now. Just like that, we have all the number ones installed. You shouldn't have any of them left. They should be all filled in here, waiting to dry and move on to the next step, which is gonna be installing the number twos. So let's explain why there's a difference between the numbers ones, twos, and threes. Now number ones, you're not gonna be able to see when you're done with this whole project. So I didn't bother making them pretty or anything. That's why they're just plain white and have the numbers actually right on them. So the difference between that and the number twos and threes is you're gonna see the twos and threes from the outside of the stadium. That's why I printed some bricks on them, made them look all pretty like. So when we cut out the number twos, Again, we're gonna cut right on the edge of the brown and the white. So we're gonna leave as much brown as we can, but make sure you can't see any white when you're done with it. The other thing is, once again, if you're printing on paper, you're gonna need it to be a little bit stronger. So you're gonna draw a line right here. Okay, so that you can fold it just like we did with the number ones. If you're doing card stock, you're just gonna cut right here. If you're doing printer paper, you draw the line and you cut all the way out here. Right now we are only doing the number twos. We'll save the number threes for later. Right now, just cutting number twos out. And then, if you have a piece of, if you print it on cardstock, you don't need this flap. So I'm gonna cut right on the edge of that gray line. And when I cut it out, it should be a perfect triangle. I'm not like an equilateral triangle, which is what I would probably think of when I say per perfect triangle. Um, I believe this is called a right triangle because it has a 90 degree angle. So yeah, when you're done with this, if you have cardstock, you should have a nice right triangle. If you have printer paper, you should have a left triangle. Now the number twos and the number threes go in different spots. So make sure you're doing this the right way. Number twos are gonna go on the side here, opposite of the press box. Press box is this blue rectangle. So it's the opposite of the press box. That's where the first number two is going. I'm doing the one with the fold, just like if you had printer paper. Remember, you don't want the fold to glue. So I'm gonna put the glue in places so that the fold doesn't touch the glue. The other number two is going to go in the tunnel. Is right here in the middle, the other stuff that we told that I told you to leave alone probably 34 times. It's gonna go in the tunnel on the, if from the camera, it's the right side, I think, right side. And then I'll probably time lapse what you do with number threes, but it's the same thing. You're gonna cut them out the same way. If you have printer paper, you're gonna need to do that fold. And then the number threes are gonna go here and then here on the end. So it's there you have it, we have all the side profiles installed. You should have all the number ones, twos, and threes installed in the stadium waiting for the glue to dry. And the next step is gonna be installing the seats. I'll probably have to come back in an hour or two and do that because I want the glue to be 100% dry before I install, start installing seats. All right, it's time to start installing the bleachers. We're actually gonna skip number fours and come back to them. And we're starting with the number fives, which I've already cut out. Number five is going right here in the middle over the two pieces that have the bricks in it, the number two and number three. It's going right here in the middle. The first row of the blue bleachers is gonna match up with that gray line that you see in pieces two and three. The other thing is it's totally okay that it overhangs the top here, okay? That's to be expected. Now, to get, to get this to glue on here, remember we don't wanna do too much glue because we don't want stuff to bubble. So all I like to do is take a little glue on a, the tip of a paperclip 
and I'm just gonna dab it all the way up the piece here. Again, doesn't take a lot of glue. Dabbing it up the tip here. And I put piece number five right here. Press it down for about a second. And that is gonna stay right there all by itself. So giving that some time to dry, we're gonna cut out all the number fours. Now when you cut out the number fours, obviously you're gonna go on the edge here, the edge here, the edge here. But make sure you notice there's a small gray strip. Those are the steps. So we're not gonna cut all the way to the edge of the red and the blue. We're gonna cut and leave this gray strip right here like this. So leave that gray strip on the end because that's gonna be your steps. And then the rest, like I said, you can just cut right along the red and the blue edges. So after I do this, I'm gonna go through and cut all the rest of the number fours. There's no need to do a time lapse because I think you get the point by now how to cut stuff out. All right, so I got all the number fours cut out and now we're gonna start lining the stadium, starting with the hardest part, a little curve right here, but it's gonna look so dang good after you do it. So, when you do the glue here, <laughs> you know, I talk a lot goofier when my wife's around. Uh, when you do it, I'm gonna dab glue on the parts that are vertical like this. But then I take my piece number four, on the step side, I'm gonna try and draw a nice straight line of glue on that side, because this is something we don't wanna come up. So. When we put the number four down, we're lining it up with this piece right here. And we want the steps on the right side, okay? Steps on the right side, just going even with that side profile right here, the one with the bricks on it. So I'm gonna line it up, set it down here, and I'm not worried about the top not being even. I'll talk about that later. So, and then the other thing is, I'm not worried about this all this excess coming off. Uh, when I first was making paper stadiums, I'd trim all this and stuff, but then I realized I'm just gonna cover it up. So what's the point, right? All right, so we'll do the next number four and then we'll hit the time lapse. Again, I'm just gonna draw a nice line of glue on the steps side. Nice line of glue on the step side. And then I could actually probably just put some glue over here, up here and whatnot. I don't really need a ton on the other side. I just need enough that it doesn't come popping up. And I'm gonna put these steps, even with this support down here, you can barely see it poking through. And I'm gonna run it and try to make sure that the top is even with the other support. So I'm really just going around this black line. There's no perfect way to do this. All right, now I've reached the part where the seats are straight, so I'm not really worried about the curve. And all I'm gonna do is go all the way down the line. I'm gonna try and space them out pretty evenly. So this actually, this shouldn't be, if you got through this little curve here, it shouldn't be the hardest part in the world. Now I've reached the end here, but you notice this section is a lot bigger than this one because I've been overlying them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another number four piece. And I'm just gonna trim a little bit off the edge here. Kind of eyeball it a little bit trim a little bit off the edge here and then that'll be the end of the we'll just say the south side of the bleachers i'll put that in like that and then the other thing is i'm going to make sure this is overhanging the end of the stadium so that you can't see under it okay it's okay for there to be about one or two millimeters overhanging right here so that you can't see under the stadium now we're going to move to the other end of the stadium and do the what did I say, this is south? North side. The only difference between the south side and the north side is on the south side, we did the, the stairs on the right. Well, we're gonna flip it over now, and on this side, we're doing the stairs on the left. We're doing the same exact thing. But this time again, stairs on the left. All right, we got all the seats installed. The thing I told you earlier about not worrying about the top row here, the reason we're doing that is because rather than trying to cut everything so it fits perfectly, we're gonna put it in there, let it dry, and then go by and trim it like a haircut. Look at that. It's like a flat top. And just try and get it, get those spiky corners and round it off as much as you can 
so that you got a nice horseshoe bowl shape in your stadium. Now we're gonna put the exterior on the stadium, which is piece number six. There's two piece number sixes. I've obviously already cut them out. And when we do this, we are gonna do a strip of glue on the top and the bottom, like so. Strip of glue on the bottom. Strip of glue on the top. Having so much fun. I just can't stop. But I should, so I don't run out of glue. I'm like the, what's his name? The happy trees guy? What's his name? Oh my God, Bob Costas. No. I'm the Bob Costas of paper stadiums. All right. Who's Bob Costas? I don't know. Bob, Bob Hope. No, you're thinking of Corey Ross, football player. I'm gonna stick the exterior on the end here and really the best way to do this is just to hold it here and let the glue dry. All right, I got the exterior on the stadium now. If you can see there. Um, you know, there's gonna be gaps and stuff in between because it's supposed to just be a beginner stadium where you're learning the basics of the paper stadium game. But I will show you how to, how to cover up one gap. These gaps that you're gonna have at the ends of the stadiums here, that's what piece number nine is for, which I already cut out. Piece number nine is a really little one that has bricks in it. I'm gonna draw a line down the middle of it. This goes back to that super secret earlier about drawing lines creates a crease, helps you fold the paper. So I'm gonna draw a line, my pen works, down the middle of this, fold it in half. And then I am just going to be gluing this right into the corner here. And I might want to trim off some of the edge stuff so it doesn't cover up this little door or the other decorative pieces. But again, just cutting out piece number nine, putting it in the corner so it covers up one of your gaps. I've cut out pieces seven and eight. This is gonna be our scoreboard and the main entrance to the stadium. And I am basically, well, I don't know why I keep saying basically, but they're designed to go back to back to each other. So the two white ends should be glued together. And then when you're done gluing them together, it'll be one piece of paper, scoreboard on one side, grand interest on the other side. After I've glued them together, since your cuts are never gonna be totally perfect, I'm just gonna go around and trim any white parts that are showing. Like so. Make sure you get on both sides. Check this side. Oh, there's some white spots on there. I'm gonna go ahead and trim those off. And now we have our grand entrance, the scoreboard on the other side. All right, so I got my scoreboard and entrance. What I'm gonna do is just curve it just a little bit by rubbing my thumb across it like such. <clears throat> and we're gonna be putting it right here. Okay. We're gonna secure that by doing a line of glue at the bottom on the scoreboard side. And you don't need it to be all the way at the bottom, just put enough on there. And when you stand it up, gravity's gonna pull it down. And then a line of glue right below the scoreboard, which should touch the top of the stadium for the most part. It doesn't need to touch it in every single spot, because remember, it doesn't take a lot of glue to make something stick. So I'm putting it up here, and I'm just gonna hold it for a few seconds and let the glue dry. Finally, we have the press box, which is probably the most complicated part of the stadium, but I've done all the dirty work for you. All you're gonna need is to score it, fold it, and glue it. So when I talk about scoring it, let's look at the two biggest rectangles here and here. This is the front and the back of the stadium, the press box. So these are supposed to be the windows where the press and suites are. This is the back side of the press box. I am basically gonna draw around those rectangles. So again, using a straight edge, following that gray line across the bottom, like that, up to the top, across the top, and down the side, and then we'll do a time lapse for the back side of the stadium. Let's go. Press box. Ugh. So double check you did this right. You're drawing around the two 
biggest rectangles here and here. You're scoring it for folding marks. The best thing about uh, if you mess up, you got the PDF on your computer, you can just print another one and start over again. Now I'm gonna cut out all this gray part. This is all gonna be in one piece. All the brown part is gonna be in one piece. I'm basically cutting out all the white part. All right, I finished cutting it out. Again, it kind of looks like this. I'm gonna make sure to save piece number 11. Don't get it messed up in the, or lost in the scraps. But now I have the press box ready to go. And I'm gonna fold along all of those black lines, but I'm actually gonna be folding on the white side. So folding them in like this. So go through and fold in all the black lines. Okay, I got all my folds folded, ready to go. And if you look at your stadium, or your press box, you put it together like this, it should make a nice, I don't know what you'd call a rectangle, like the cube version of a rectangle. I don't know what that's even called. But what I'm gonna do is you have these two tabs on the end. So I open it up to show you what I'm talking about. This tab and this tab. And my printer actually created a blemish here, so I'm gonna put that tab underneath so you don't see it. So the two tabs on the end, I'm gonna fold them under. I'm gonna glue this tab fold them under and I'm going to create that box like this. Okay, don't worry about gluing the tops yet. Just worry about gluing these tabs together. Now I got piece number 11. I told you to save it. Hopefully you were a good little listener. Piece number 11 is the roof of the press box and it looks like my piece number 11 needs to be refitted and I make it wide enough, but you get the idea. It should cover up the, yours will cover up the entire press box like this, and it's gonna hold those flaps down on the top. So again, gonna do just a little bit of glue. You don't need a lot of glue. Little bit of glue on the top of the press box. And when I say top, the best way to make sure you're doing the top and not the bottom is make sure the paper stadiums is reading right side up. So a little bit of glue on the top. This is actually the first time I've built this. So I expected to see some mistakes like this roof that doesn't fit. Again, your roof will cover up the entire top of the press box, but I put it on the top. And then the best way to get this to dry is to flip it upside down, press it against your table, just run your fingers along the top, pushing down that glue. It should only take about 10, 15 seconds to dry. Here we go with the final piece of your first paper stadium. We're gonna put the press box in place. This blue rectangle is where the press box is going. Make sure the S is on the outside of the stadium. The windows are facing the inside of the stadium. And I'm gonna put glue around the edges here. And this is kind of an instance where since you're not gonna see it, it's okay to use a lot of glue. Because even if the paper's wavy, it's gonna be facing the bottom of the platform. You're not gonna see it, blah, blah, blah. Put this on top of that blue rectangle. Maybe put something on top of here to let it grow, let it uh, dry. You'll actually realize this is kind of a strong little box you made. So I'm gonna put a, oh, my box of, or my container of clips. And I'm just gonna let that dry for a minute and then we'll conclude this video. Congratulations, you've made your first paper stadium. Don't worry if it doesn't look perfect. Uh, here's a picture of my per first paper stadium and I guarantee yours probably looks better than mine did. Uh, tweet it at me, tweet a picture to me. I promise you I will retweet anybody that makes their own paper stadium. And until then, I will catch you on the flippity flip. Yes, I do have a mullet. <laughs>